In our work, we illustrate that generative models can outperform sparsity-based models in signal recovery. The effectiveness of utilizing generative models largely stems from the way in which they view natural signals. For instance, generative models are specifically trained so that their range approximates the distribution of a certain class of signals. The variety of signal classes generative models have been trained to output, an example being images of celebrities. The latent code dimension is much smaller than the ambient dimension, forcing them to learn to express these signals in a low-dimensional way. Hence, once trained, generative models are able to provide an explicit low-dimensional parameterization of the natural signal manifold. Sparsity-based models, on the other hand, view signals as living in the union of combinatorially many subspaces. This is arguably a more complicated mathematical structure than the range of a generative model, and one that does not tightly characterize the types of signals that we're interested in, as for example, some sparse signals may not be natural images. Based on these observations, we show that exploiting generative models in signal recovery problems leads to more sample efficient recovery, both in theory and in practice. A specific case in point is the compressive phase retrieval problem, which asks to recover an n-dimensional signal given the absolute value of linear observations, where the number of measurements is far less than n. If y0 is s sparse, there is no known algorithm to recover y0 from less than order s squared generic measurements. This order s squared computational bottleneck is in stark contrast to the fundamental order s recovery result in the linear compressed sensing case. In spite of this, we show that if the signal is the output of a generative model, a k-dimensional latent code can be recovered from order k generic measurements. The following is a more precise formulation of our problem. Given the absolute value of linear measurements, we want to recover the signal y0, assuming it is the output of a generative model. Thus, in order to recover y0, we recover the original latent code corresponding to it, from which y0 is obtained by applying the generative model g. We assume that g is a d-layer fully connected feed-forward neural network with Rayleigh activation functions and no bias terms. To recover x0, we solve the following L2 empirical risk minimization problem. Our main result illustrates that the empirical risk objective has favorable geometry for gradient methods with optimal sample complexity. In particular, the objective function has a strict descent direction outside of two arbitrarily small neighborhoods of the minimizer and a negative multiple thereof if the number of measurements on the order of k, the neural network layers are sufficiently expansive, and the measurement matrix A and weights of our generative model have IID Gaussian entries. We also provide experiments on synthetic and natural signals and compare a method against sparsity-based techniques and show that under a generative prior, far fewer measurements are needed to recover the signal. The following are some qualitative examples of recovery on MNIST for 100 and 300 measurements with a pre-trained variational autoencoder. We compare our results to three sparse phase retrieval algorithms. We see that for a small number of measurements, our algorithm is able to semantically recover nearly all the images, while the sparse phase retrieval methods are unable to do so. For more details and further experiments, please see our paper along with our oral and poster presentations, whose dates and times are provided below. Thank you.